My name is Floyd Pelham. I'm giving you a summary, short summary, part two of the book that I'm writing on 57th Street Gallery. I'm the owner, creator of 57th Street Gallery. It's an art gallery jazz venue I wanted to do since a little kid. And later on in life, I made it come alive, and I did that over in the Bay Area of North Oakland going into Berkeley at 5701 Telegraph. i like to dedicate part two to two special people I met in my journey at 57th Street Gallery. It's Khalil Shaheed and Eddie Marshall, three people, and Bill Bell. These were three beautiful individuals that I had experience to work with and did things with at the gallery. See, 57th Street Gallery was that kind of place, man. When I opened the place up, it just wasn't a place I was opening up where they could come listen to music, have some food, have a good time to go home. No, this was a place for us. This was a place for the, my musicians, for my artists. This was a place that start just growing into a little family of our own, of musicians and artists, man. And it was so beautiful, along with many, many people that I met that came to 57th Street Gallery. You know, I always say I hate when I had to close 57th Street Gallery, but, you know, things happen. It was a lot. It was too much, but it was not too much. You know, I needed some help. That was my first business, first thing coming out the gate. I learned so much. I learned so much about people and the musicians, about music, about giving shows, about booking shows, events, how to stage things, how to give a theme to things. You know, we did the spoken word. I was just, oh, so cool, so cool. You know, so I'd come up with all these ideas all the time, you know, on how to give shows around my shows. And mind you, I always had beautiful art all around the gallery all the times at all the shows that I ever did. That's what I always wanted to do. You know, I'm an artist and a musician. I play the drums and I play the piano, which I play at home. I just love, you know what I mean? You know, um, messing around to write little songs. It's something I always did too, was write little songs, but I'll get to that in a little while. So 57th Street Gallery became a home for all these artists and musicians around the Bay Area, around the country, and from all over the world when they came into the Bay Area, you know. I remember, you know, at Yoshi's, the happening jazz place that's been there 40 years or longer. We used to get all the stars there, and so many people wanted to play there, but they couldn't get on that stage, so that was another reason that I made up a stage and opened up 57th Street Gallery. You know, and then I had my friend up at State College, the mu- music director, um, his name, I just can't think of his name right this second. But he worked with me also when people would come into town, you know, for the music and the arts. He would, uh, they would give him big money over at the colleges and stuff. And then he would send them over to me. When musicians came in town for Yoshi's and different events, they'd come over after their show to, you know, because all these musicians, and they knew each other as all friends. They played with each other for years. You know what I'm saying? So they heard about my place. And I started hearing talk all over that they were talking about me in New York, Chicago, Detroit, Miami, Los Angeles. Different places, man. You know, this was something I wanted to do, man. And I put my all into it. Like, you know, when I do things, I go for it, man. You know, you know, I have a target and I hit the target every time. At least I give it my best, you know. I started this by myself, just me and my wife. You know, she did all the designs, the the the, the cars, you know, the um, the stuff on the website. You know, and back then, you know, it was, everything was um, the old school. We don't have none of the stuff we have today. So we had to really get right down into it, man. And we learned so much, man. And we created a beautiful thing here in 57th Street Gallery that I want to open back up again. Yes, I do. I want to reopen 57th Street Gallery, which I will. If God say the same and I'm still here. Money's off this book, what I'm doing. That's why I'm headed, you guys, okay? I'm always looking for sponsors, you know what I'm saying? People to invest, people to work with me. I'm open, you know? 
but I will make 57th Street Gallery come back alive once again. I done talked to hundreds of people from the Bay Area and got called, how they missed the place, is it opening back up, and all that. And I tell them, yes, you know, so I'm working towards that as we speak. So we became a tight-knit family, and like, you know, I was right, I was making, I'm an artist, so I was making a little a poster and writing in names, you know, 57 Street Gallery, the players, the musicians, the artists. And I got to write names, man. I got to over 150 famous people and all these people on this poster. It took three posters to get these names and I still have to write down some more. Three boards. Um, they're playing all over the United States, the world, jazz festivals, places everywhere. They're really doing real good. A lot of them doing real good. That started out with me. When they came to me, they was already in the mix. When I saw them, I pushed them. I gave people ideas. I stood with them. I stood behind them. I never forget Bill. Bill said, son, these people, they go use drugs. They do this and that. He took his finger and jabbed it in my chest. He said, everything you need, you got it right there. You got it right there. I never forget that. Same with Khalil Shaheed. He used to tell me certain things. He said, man... You ain't no bull. I thought you was a con, a racket. I thought you were just trying to run something by us and do the thing. He said, you for real, man. You for real. And he said, I know another reason why you for real. He said, you Henry Pelham's son. He knew my father from way back. Khalil Shields out of Chicago. My grandfather and my family's out of Chicago. Okay, the Pelhams. So I met him and then Eddie Marshall was some kind of individual too, man. He was something else, and many, many others. Yeah, I remember Kenny Washington at Casino, Baba Tune Lee, man, um, Terry O'Dobby, um, so many of them, man. Um, Ray Obieto, you know, um, Terrence Brewer, just a, just a lot of people not really getting into names, man. Um, you know, I gave shows on New Year's Eve. For the New Year's, I got into that. Black History Month, I always put out a nice, you know, thing of paintings and music and stuff. You know, I stayed with the times and with the events that was going on through the calendar year. You know, I had a new card calendar made every month on my flyers, my cards listed for the whole month who was playing at 57th Street Gallery along with their names. If you go to the website, you'll see pictures and different times of music and if you go to my channel 5701 street youtube 5701 street youtube and you're going to see so much so much so many musician people so we became a family you know and, and along with my customers and friends i used to get up in front of the mic man i'd be sitting in in the middle of the crowd and the show getting ready to start and i just get up walk to the mic and i talk to my people i said thanks for coming out you know, you guys have a good time. You know, I'm, everybody's welcome. Tell your friends about this place. This is a place to come down, sit down, relax, enjoy it. Just let go, enjoy it, just enjoy it. I said, pretty soon, I'm going to have a, a, a video thing set up where you could be at home and you could watch a live show right now, starting at 8 o'clock in your home. And I was talking about streaming, and I didn't know what I was doing. This was... Um, 2004. So I got with um, Clifford Brown Jr. And we got with some video people and, and some kind of network thing. And we started to stream. And real quick, they stopped us. You know, it was too soon. It was too early. They was not ready for that, you know. So I kept doing the interviews at KCSM on the radio. You know, Chewy Vuela, um, the, um, Chris Cortez. You know, Clifford Brown Jr. used to be in the audience all the time. You know, from K people from K-Poo, Afrikan, from another channel, and then different channels, man. And then I did some things in the paper, you know, and they're doing articles on me and everything. And I'm proud of what I did. And I'm proud where I took the gallery and where it went. You know, it will live on forever. I have so much footage. I video just about every show for years and years. So I have so much content to show you guys. Just go to the channel, 5701 57th Street, YouTube. And then my other channels that you'll be seeing coming on. And you'll get a lot of this, man, you know. So I have some things going on here. I'm finishing off these books. This is a short summary of the book of 57th Street Gallery. It should be out in four or five months, something like that. 
along with my life story, Floyd Pelham, in a book on the docks at a longshore in the maritime industry of the West Coast. Okay, these are three great historical books, my life, the docks going back my career 50 years, and a story of 57th Street Gallery that I started from nothing. I mean, from nothing, from four people coming to the first show and not knowing where to go to get anybody to play, man. And just the way I do things, I got out of there and I got with it and I got to talking to people. You know, I'm doing God's will here. You know, I always say, I wake up every morning, I thank God for another day. You know, and I tell God, just guide me in my life. What can I do? How can I serve? How can I help? The world's in a in a in a heck of a place, y'all. You know what I'm talking about. You know, people need people. We need each other. We need to stick together. We need to look out for one another. We need to do the right thing and stay out the way, man. Okay? I don't want to get all into that right here. You'll hear some more of that later on on a different channel. But this is part two of the story of 57th Street Gallery. You know how they came into them rooms and they just they, they made magic in them rooms. I heard musicians say that. I had so many, so many musicians come in there, man. Pee Wee Ellis that did all the songs for James Brown. And I mean many, many, many. I just can't go into all the names right now. But it was the place, man, you know. So I'm just keeping it live, keeping it going on the internet. Okay? Tune in to 57, 5701-57th Street YouTube. 5701-57th Street YouTube. Check out that channel. There's a lot more to come. Thank you. I'll be back with part three.